Hey and welcome back to another reaction video. Today we will look at the updates from Evernote. Directly a video from Evernote where they sum up what was released during July. And as I haven't catched up with Evernote recently, I thought it's a good moment to watch this video with you guys together and share my five cents with you. So let's dive right in. Paperless movement, your productivity, your way. All right. Let's talk about July. So, um, our focusing the next few months on two main tracks. These are collaboration and quality of life. Collaboration is pretty self-explanatory. We are trying to work on a few different things that, that have to do with like note sharing, um, real-time collaboration, and in general, like mm, the experience of using Evernote together with others. Well, I'm really curious to see more about collaboration as it seemed to me that they are slowly killing the team feature inside Evernote. It seems they're going actually the opposite direction. So it opens up much more for the teams as well. And with all the other features added, also something that we are not fans of in the paperless movement with the calendar, task management and all these things, making the all-in-one solution like so many other tools try to do as well. I'm curious how they make a special take on team collaboration there. The second track, uh, quality of life, is everything that is related to how you individually use Evernote and its mm, most famous and loved features in a way that is fast, reliable, and, and just good overall. Both well, that's something that I always appreciated in Evernote, the accessibility on all the different devices, but also the reliability and the performance. And as many of you know, this dropped in the recent years significantly with all the updates coming in the new platform. And let's see what I have to share there about this. Both from the standpoint of building new things, but also from the point of view of just like improving what's currently um, doable on Evernote. So these are the two tracks that we will work on in the next few months, but we already have some things that we can show you. So the first one is, um, there used to be a couple of different links, the web link and the app link, when you used to share a note with somebody, uh, which is something that is powerful, but also a bit hard to understand. It's not intuitive. So we've simplified that. There is now a single link, and I'm going to tell you how it works in a second. I love this. Okay, let's go quickly back. As we can see here, the web and app link has been unified into a single link, which brings more many improvements to the sharing experience. Obviously, that's something that we advocate at the paperless movement and the ICO methodology, that you leverage these internal links to the specific items inside the tools. Because what this allows you is to use multiple tools for specific use cases and then have one centralized tool, your single source of truth, where you link out to the related content. So let's say you don't want to have all the files in uploaded to this ClickUp task. Makes not even sense in many cases, but you can link out to the related file on Google Drive. And the same applies to emails, for example, where you can use the email link and put it into the manager. To specific blogs inside Heptabase, Tana, Notion, you can have a link to specific items there. And that's how you cross connect different tools. So wherever you are in your centralized tools, you have the context from all the other tools as well. And that's why it's so important to have a unified link here. So it's no confusion and no friction getting this link and share it elsewhere. So we've simplified that there is now a single link and I'm going to tell you how it works in a second. In general, the sharing flow was a bit unoptimized. Um, and so there was this not very user-friendly model pop-up window. Then the recipient had to click on the email uh, and inside the email there were like two different links based on like the platform that they wanted to use. The email sometimes didn't work. Loading the node itself often take too long. So now we've simplified this in this way. So the sharing model is now much simpler to use. It's both faster and just like the, the UX is much more approachable. It's simplified, it's very easy to understand. There's like this sharing link section and the public link section uh, where you can publish your, your note to everybody if you want, or you can just uh, share the note with just a few people that you um, pick individually. So it's still a sharing process. So I have to share the whole note, it seems, and not 
individual items within the node, something like in ClickUp or the blocks in Heptabase, you just right click and you get a copy link thing and that's it. And you can quickly use it internally. I'm not even talking about sharing it to somebody else, but leveraging these links for yourself. And that's something I'm a bit missing. Then the email. Well, to speed things up, but that's obviously the public link there. Is now completely different. We, we rebuilt it from scratch. It only contains one link now to avoid confusion. And now the note opens by default on the web browser, um, but you can opt in to open it on the desktop app if you want by just checking the, the checkbox. On the that's perfect to me. For example, I'm using the Arc browser and that's my productivity hub. All the productivity tools that I use are loaded inside Arc as pinned tabs, if you like. So I have quick access and easy switching between the different tools. And therefore I prefer that things open up in the browser first. That pop up that you see there. Okay, this was about collaboration. Let's see quality of life improved. When we released the new mobile user interface, there were a few sections. Well, there was collaboration, that was it. In the beginning, we saw some screenshot where people were working inside a note document, uh, inside a note together live. I expected a bit more there, to be honest, but maybe the coming months then. It were secondary compared to like notes or notebooks, for instance, that we didn't really know where to put. We didn't want to take any like final decisions. We didn't know yet if um, the navigation bar that we were going with was the final decision. So we kind of used the settings page, the settings list as a um, group to include all the secondary sections. So now we've simplified that and, and we, we've made it much clearer. So now you have this little menu that you can access by tapping on your profile picture on the upper left through which you can access widgets, trash, settings, the help and learning section uh, and your account. So then now it's separate settings are actually settings now and, and here you have these secondary section. Okay, second filter by reminders is now cleaning up UI is always improving UX. Well, it's not always improving if you do it wrong, obviously, but that seems to be a good move there. Back, you could do this in the past. You had this like tab approach where you could see both like your notes and then just look at, at the notes with the reminders. In the note list, this was a bit unoptimized, um, was a bit clunky to, to use, it was a bit slow. Um, and so we put it behind the, the filters, basically exactly as you can filter a note by, I don't know, every every note that contains a PDF, every note that has a specific tag, every note that is located in a specific notebook, uh, you can now filter by note that, that have reminders. There are some... I'm curious, uh, any one of you using Evernote, are you using reminders for notes? So if you want to follow up to read something, do you use reminders for that? Because I cannot see really how to use reminders in this regards. I'm using reminders a lot in many situations, especially when I need to follow up, for example, a message that I need to quickly postpone. And it's rather a snooze functionality to me and then setting up proper reminders. If I want to work on something in a recurring basis or I need to read an article based on the ICO methodology, read the article is an action. So it will live in my action app. Obviously, if you're using task, the task management inside Evernote, it would be there. So maybe in this case, using a reminder might be the easier way. I don't know. I'm curious. Just let me know in the comments below. Some improvements on the calendar section too. So you can view your week or month now on, on mobile. Um, plus you can create events on, on mobile. And a uh, little spoiler, we are starting to roll out to async for Google and Outlook calendar accounts. Finally, we now have a public bug fix tracker. So we know that a lot of people have been asking for this, like when we fix some bug, um, let us know. So not everybody reads the release notes on like the app store, for instance. And so now we have this like public bug fix tracker where you can see if the bug that is affecting you um, ha has been solved. And that's it. Uh, apologies again for only posting all right, that was it. Okay. <laughs> Is it huge improvements or changes? Well, as we keep saying, it's all about subtleties and there's 
obviously slowly getting there. I'm a fan of slower progress, but well thought out progress than big jumps and then messing up from so many people, the workflows. So I'm curious to keep following. If you want to stay up to date and you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And if you like those updates, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I'll catch you up next time.